All right, shifting focus now away from domestic politics to some international and strategic focus. India has maintained the power play in the region by bolstering its military power. The latest one coming on Monday with Mission Divyastra, the first test flight of the indigenously developed Agni 5 missile with multiple independently targetable re entry vehicle technology. Now, the advanced tech ensures that the warhead can split or multiple warheads can split into multiple re-entry vehicles to deliver a precise and targeted attack at different locations. The Agni-5 is powered by three-stage solid fuel engine. It boasts a striking range of over 5,000 kilometers with exceptional accuracy. Equipped with indigenous avionic systems and high accuracy sensor packages, it's been hailed as a testament to India's growing defense and technological prowess. India now joins a select group of nations which possess the MIRV capability, which includes the P5 countries, United States, Britain, France, Russia and China. But this feat by the Indian Defense Forces, by the DRDO, seems to have rattled China a bit. Uh, it has raised the Arunachal bogey yet again after the successful test. China has lodged a diplomatic protest with India over Prime Minister Modi's visit there to Arunachal last week. Uh, remember, he had gone there and inaugurated the Sela Tunnel, which is the world's highest tunnel uh, for uh, the purposes of transport. Now, China says that India's moves will only complicate the unresolved boundary question. India, for its part, has rejected Chinese concerns and said it's been made aware of India's position on several occasions. Prime Minister Modi on Saturday had dedicated the Sela Tunnel, which is built at an altitude of 13,000 feet in Arunachal Pradesh. It will provide all-weather access to Tawang, which of course has been the site of a dispute between India and China. ये डिफेंस सेक्टर में आत्मनिर्भर भारत की एक और बड़ी उड़ान है विकसित भारत की कल्पना आत्मनिर्भर भारत के बिना संभव ही नहीं है All right, let me go across to two guests who are joining us on this face-off. Professor Victor Gao is Vice President of the Center for China and Globalization. And Lieutenant General uh, Syed Atta Hasnan is former GOC and CEO of the 15 Core. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Let me start with Professor Gao first. Uh, why does China seem so rattled? After all, uh, this is an indigenous development by Indian scientists of the Defense Research uh, and Development Organization, a 5,000-kilometer uh, range Agni-5 missile, which has multiple intended re-entry vehicle uh, capability. Why is China getting so rattled by that? Nowhere has India said that this uh, technology is uh, aimed at China. Thank you very much for having me. I disagree with your question. I think China has made progress to the Indian government for two things. One is the deployment of about 10,000 Indian troops to the disputed areas uh, between China and India. Secondly, China protested against Prime Minister Modi to the disputed area in the eastern section of China-Indian border, uh, which is called uh, South Tibet by China and called as Arunachal Pradesh by India. Now, there is no dispute that there, the border dispute does exist and China and India need to handle their border dispute carefully rather than provoking each other. And China believed the deployment of 10,000 troops and Prime Minister Modi's visit to Arunachal Pradesh, as India calls it, and as South Tibet, as China calls it, is highly provocative. That's okay. the reason of the Chinese protest. No, but the fact that this missile was tested yesterday, Prime Minister Modi went to Arunachal Pradesh on Saturday, and on the day that this missile is tested, and India announces to the world that the missile has been tested, that's when China decides to make... Uh, 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 a noise about the Arunachal Pradesh visit, not on the day that it happened. I don't think so. I think as a sovereign country, 
India has full right to develop its own defense weapons of all kinds. Mm -hmm. And China has no problem with that. China and India need to follow a pathway of peace with each other rather than militarization against each other or provoking each other. Okay. That's why China takes it very, as a matter of fact, the announcement of the Indian military achievements. To a certain degree, I think any significant Indian achievement is welcomed by China. Let India me ask uh, General Hasnan, uh, there are only five other countries, the P5 countries essentially, which have this MIRV technology. India now becomes the sixth. And clearly, if you have an intercontinental ballistic missile at 5,000 kilometer range and with this MIRV technology, which can carry multiple nuclear warheads, isn't the message to China, even if it is unsaid? See, first of all, Zaka, I have a great respect for Professor Gao, the intellectual of uh, great repute. And uh, therefore, but I have to, I have to counter him in his perception here. This whole aspect of missile warfare, China has developed this capability for many years, last 20, 30 years. They have an a, a, a entire arm called the second artillery, which is dedicated essentially to missilery. India doesn't have anything of that kind. We've got very limited missilery so far. What we are attempting to essentially do is to catch up with the rest of the world. In fact, it's a very good thing that among the five, among the bigger powers, we have also now got the capability. And this is not necessarily targeted at China. We've demonstrated our capability. If nations develop and test such equipment, such weaponry, essentially to also ascertain their own technological capability and what threshold have they been able to reach up to. If China perceives a test by India as a threat to itself, then this, that's China's perception. It's not necessarily India's concern about that. They, we should be perceiving similarly every time that China talks about missilery, the kind of things that they do over Taiwan and places like that are equally threats to us. So, but we have not been protesting about that. But, so but, I but think, General, I think, if I, I think if I may, it's a fair one. Th yeah. This technology of MIRV, which is a uh, missile that's a, with a range of 5,000 kilometers, capable of hitting Beijing, as they say, but more importantly, can, cap, can uh, carry up to three to five nuclear warheads. Isn't that more for deterrence reasons, and particularly more so because India has a no first use policy, rather than for actual deployment? It's not like this rocket is going to be deployed tomorrow at the LAC. Absolutely, Zaka, absolutely. And we are not going to war with China, and China also knows it's not going to war with us. These are things which nations do for their protection. These are all act absolutely correct. These are acts of deterrence, which you do from time to time. And China is not the only one with whom we have to, uh, you know, develop that capability. We have others around us. We have, we live in a, in a, in a neighborhood which is a disturbed neighborhood. So I think China should not feel really disturbed about this because it has developed its own capabilities over a period of time. And we have never protested about it. Okay. No, the problem, Professor Gao, is it's not just forget about India, China, uh, you know, India, uh, China's behavior towards India, particularly in the last three, four years. That's a matter of a completely different debate altogether. India looks around the region and Chinese behavior around the region, whether it is with Japan or with South Korea or with Vietnam or with uh, Philippines and, and of course, with Taiwan. What is the signal that India is supposed to, to derive? That here is a country which uh, has superpower ambitions, which is trying to change the status quo and sometimes even militarily push the envelope uh, if, 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 uh, if it came down to that. So the, the signal and the only uh, meaning that India can decipher out of this is that India has to fortify its defenses because today it is Taiwan and Philippines, tomorrow it could be India. So India is just fortifying its defenses with the test of the Agni-5. Allow me to emphasize one thing. China is a superpower in the world. China is one of the five permanent member states in the Security Council of the United Nations. China is on the par with the United States militarily. And China is a larger economy than the U.S. economy if we use purchasing power parity. And China is next only to the United States if we use official exchange rate. China today, in terms of its size of the economy, is more than five times that of India. This is the reality. However, please bear in mind, China has achieved all this transformation through peace, not occupying any single inch of foreign land, 
not occupying any foreign country. You talked about uh, Taiwan. Read Indian government's position. Indian government recognizes and acknowledges there is only one China. Taiwan is part of China. That's the reality. Don't get that wrong. Look at China-Japan relations. Japan unconditionally surrendered to China and the United States and the former Soviet Union, signing an instrument of unconditional surrender. In that surrender, Japan undertook some commitments. You never want to allow Japan to relay their commitment signed into the instrument of the unconditional surrender. Otherwise, you take the risk of resurrecting the shadows of imperialism in Japan. No, no, but now, Professor Gao, you're China missing China the Vietnam. point. The, the point being that there's only one country that seems to have a problem with its neighbors, or at least its neighbors seem to have a problem with it. I never hear of Indonesia complaining about Japanese high-handedness or about Cambodia complain or Thailand complaining about South Korean high-handedness. Everybody is worried about Chinese hegemony. So then who I is disagree. the problem with? I disagree. Allow me to tell you one simple truth. China has 14 land neighboring countries. China signed a border treaty with 12 of them including Vietnam. China has a border treaty agreement with Vietnam. Only two countries have not signed border treaty with China. India, your great India, and Bhutan, which is controlled by India in terms of diplomacy and military. Okay. China has signed the border treaty with, among all the others, Russia. Do you hear any problem between China and Russia, which share border of 4,300 well, kilometers that's only long. in the recent past. Oh. Historically, you know, the Soviet Union and China never saw eye to eye. But be that as it may, that, that's, that's not the point of tonight's debate. But General Hasnan, you know, I want to come back to the point. This development of the stage uh, of the Agni 5 is happening in the context of, and let's not, you know, diminish the context because the context is absolutely important, the changed situation that we are seeing and certainly the changed dynamic and the changed relations between Beijing and Delhi over the last four years since the 2020 Galwan incident happened. Let's face the reality. Today, uh, as the external affairs minister said, ties between India and China are not normal. And there's a singular reason for why it's not normal. That's because the situation on the LAC as it existed for the last 30 years, the treaties and the situation on the ground, that has been completely appended by Chinese action. The ball really is in our court on either you, you know, raise the cost for China not to try and dare to, uh, uh, to change that situation, over the, to change the status quo over the last 30 years, or we accept a new reality. See, Zaka, why only talk of the context of India and China here? Let's talk of the context of China and much of the world. What's happening in the Philippines? What's happening in the South China Sea? What's happening with Vietnam and with Indonesia, with many other countries? I mean, China, Professor Gao can keep uh, boasting of uh, China being a superpower and, and at peace with everyone and having signed accords all over. Yes, but at the end of it, the reality is everyone still feels threatened by China. Exactly. The whole world feels threatened by China at the moment. Coming to the actual context of India and China, see 2020. A very peaceful relationship being developed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, at that time over the last five, six years. The kind of exchanges that we had between the Chinese president and the Indian prime minister. We all thought we were on pig's back as far as the relationship was concerned. And then one fine day, because you feel threatened, because China feels threatened, China feels that India is getting too confident, China, China feels that India has got a, a leader at last who can make things happen, they feel threatened all, all together. What do you do? You, you create a problem in a non-existing problem area, in Latakh, and, and, and decide to, to trigger off something which will probably never stop for many, many years. And so we have to, whoever we are in context with, we have to take care of our defense. Yes. And obviously, this is all a part of those measures which are being taken. Not only that, it's a demonstration of our overall capability, which we will match over the next few years. All right, we'll leave it at that. Let's see how the story plays out between India and China. But I think the message is very, very clear that India is no longer just a pushover. It is militarily a power, a power that has to be reckoned with. And it's a power that's not going to accept unilateral change of status quo. And as far as the Agni 5 is concerned, it's absolutely 
an unambiguous signal particularly in the context of the no first use uh, that this is uh, an ultimate deterrent weapon more than one meant for actual deployment.